Okay, welcome to Animation 475 Game Design. It's me, Patrick. And so the thing that we're gonna be talking about today, we're doing the we're doing the board game. And some people had some questions as to what doing a case study on a board game was. So all it really is is that you find a board a board game of some sort, you know, you look at the history think about how it works and a few other things and then the one thing that I've been trying to do is you know trying to make a I'm asking you to make a board game to um, kind of tie into you know some sort of maybe animation plot that you want to do for a future project so that's that's kind of it um, but I mean those of you who are in multimedia um, I don't know, um, you know, maybe you could do a COVID game. You know, maybe you could do, uh, you know, something that has maybe a bit of a, a, a public uh, service message or the, the, and the reason why I say this is that uh, games, throughout, games throughout history, um, at least in the 20th century, have often had um have often had um have often had um moral um have often had moral stories so and we'll we'll see that um and the one thing is is that i i hope i'm not you know i hope that i'm not um insulting your intelligence or anything but um you know i'm going to talk about the connection between Candyland and polio. And I, all of a sudden I just realized, I said, man, maybe some of you don't remember what polio is. And the only, and the, something that's really interesting is that polio is not completely gone. But the weird thing is, is that the um, polio is largely gone because of vaccine. By the way, anti-vaxxers, you know, uh, polio is bad, I'll show you. Um, better to have a vaccine and um so anyway what what happens is that um yeah it's it's still pretty you know going pretty bad in uh pakistan and afghanistan so it's it's not completely gone but you know it's it's actually kind of out here so you know be careful if you go to pakistan or afghanistan i'm not going to afghanistan <laughs> no way am I going to Afghanistan as an American. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> I'll enjoy all 15 minutes of uh, being there. <laughs> so anyway. All right. Sorry, that was a little bit of a joke. Um, so this is the... Um, this is the document. It's out on uh, Blackboard, and this is the case study. Basically, you know, just like what's the what's the theme of the game? It's history. Somebody asked me, "What's its idea?" So, in other words, what's what's the general concept? In other words, you know, what's its what's its narrative? Was it trying to tell you? And Miriam, I let you in. and mute yourself. I'm gonna meet you. Okay. All right. So let me check. Let me check what you just said, Miriam. Okay. Um, oops. And don't worry about it, Miriam. I um, accidentally hit. I I I accidentally hit uh, call. So don't worry about it. Okay. So, um, here's the situation. It's basically, you know what's you know what's the theme of the game and kind of like what the idea is. Was it do you know? And are there any characters in it? Like in Shoots and Ladders, there are some characters. In the Game of Life, 
it's just supposed to be you and it's symbolic, you know, with this little Parcheesi character. You know, so, uh, you know, so that's kind of the answer there. It's like, you know, you're, you know, you're the, kind of you're the character. And then how does the game work? You know, uh, say, for example, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, shoots and ladders, which, you know, was originally snakes and ladders. And, um, you know, it's just really a matter of just of a chance game. Uh, I mean, like snakes and ladders, it's just a, is a, is a chance game based on certain, certain stories of morality. Um, I'll tell you more about it. So, and the thing is, is that is there, and, and then, could you make this into, you know, an animation style game? You know, could you could you turn it into something that's you know based on maybe a, um, you know, some sort of story that you're wanting to tell? So that's that. And then this is just talking about format. Uh, I'm talking about A3. Um, and when we get started, I'll give you a uh, Illustrator format. Um, Sort of thing. So as I said, um, basically we're talking about like um, a dice game. Six. Actually, if you want to get crazy, you could have the different. You know, you could have different um, different sized dice. Um, or, you know, if you've got some issue with dice, you know, you could have cards with the numbers one to six. So that's all right. Okay. So that's the overview of what's going on. Let's take a look at a few games, shall we? Um, let me unshare this document. And then let me go over to here. We got some stuff. All right. So here we go, game design 475, you know, all that, board game, boom, okay. So I just went over the case study uh, document. And as I said, since a couple people have done it, I thought I'd do a couple. So here we go. Um, the game of life. This is really interesting. It was created in, 19, in 1680. It's over, it's over 160 years old. That's crazy. You know, I mean, these are, you know, this is one reason why I love history, you know, it's just, but as you can see, it updated, you know, like going to college and, you know, getting a car. I mean, come on, they didn't, they didn't have cars in 1860. Voila. You know. Could you imagine, could you imagine the game of life in, uh, Maybe, could you imagine the game of life if it was uh, modified for Osmani times in uh, in uh, in Istanbul or Izmir, you know, in the 1860s? <laughs> that'd be crazy. Actually, that'd be that. You know what? Those would be. That would, that would actually be a great senior project, actually. Modifying, modifying, um, modifying board games for different times of, different times of life. So anyway, um, yeah, there was a guy named Milton Bradley. You know, he basically became the Milton Bradley Company. So the thing is, the checkered game of life, yeah. And, um, you know, he was a printer. And, um, 
We sold 45,000 games. That was a lot, actually. And um, so, you know, in the 19th century, you know, there were a lot of games had like a big moral message. You know, there's like, actually Monopoly is a, is a, is a very moral game. Uh, its beginnings were uh, against owning everything. So anyway, uh, it's a little bit like a checkerboard. And really, it's kind of what we're doing. You know, you want to land on good spaces or, you know, you want to make sure not to be on uh, bad spaces. And the interesting thing here is that um, this is kind of what I was saying is that back in the old days in America, people thought of dice with gambling. So in other words, there was like a little top, there was like a little top with six sides that would come up, you know, with, with, with a number. And the thing is, it's just about, it's just about, um, you know, just get about, just about getting a random number so we can play. So anyway, um, so get this, here's, here's the ad. Here's the American ad from the 1980s. Check this out, it's so vaporwave. Or, I say with all due respect, what would, uh, what, would, what would the game of life look like if you modified it for being who you are with your family and your culture? That would be kind of, that would actually be a very interesting project, actually. So, um, hmm, anyway. That's kind of interesting. And I'm just seeing here, nothing in the chat. Okay, got it. Just making sure that we're all, all good. And I said, today is pretty short. So another thing that's super interesting, um, oh, I will also want to, Turn my face off. All right. This is kind of interesting. Uh, shoots and ladders, if you ever played that. Um, yeah, this is actually an old Indian board game. Mocha Patam. So, you know, it's like, Crazy, right? So in other words, it takes you around this checkerboard and it, uh, you know, it takes you on life things and then, you know, you get to, you get to the end. So, you know, you have a bunch of, you have a bunch of squares that you go around. And the thing is, is that if you have, you know, if you're fortunate, you come upon a ladder and if you come upon something bad, you know, you got a snake. And so it, you know, you either, you're either climbing up or falling down and all that sort of thing. And it's really what we're doing is what we're, we're making what they call a, um, a, uh, um, a race game. You know, it's like, who gets to the end first? And so this is, I mean, the thing that I think is really interesting is that, I mean, like, Parcheesi, which also in America became uh, frustration, I mean, aggravation, which I used to play with my parents all the time. And, um, you know, and I mean, we used to play backgammon a lot in, in this, you know, in, uh, in America and not so much though. It was, it was, you know, it was considered kind of exotic. Um, and yeah, I, I'm trying to remember the games that I played. I used to play, there was a card game I used to play called Flux. I know you guys play Uno a lot. And um, I used to play, you know, 
I used to play Uno tons, you know, and that's a card game, not a board game. Um, shoots and ladders. And so it's really just kind of the idea of like, you know, this is sort of like a, um, a life journey complicated by virtues and vices. So um, let's see, I think I've got, okay. So that actually became Shoots and Ladders when Milton Bradley bought it in 1943. If you can't guess Milton Bradley, you know, from, you know, after making the game of life, you know, became a big, big board game company. So um, they, they wound up buying up a, a lot of different things. So what happens is that, um, and you may not believe this, but mathematicians study game theory. And so what's really interesting here is that, you know, um, shoots and ladders, you know, has this very specific curve for completion. And so, you know, what you wind up doing is it's like, yeah, and they've studied this, you know, the Milton Bradley version with hundred squares with 19 shoots and ladders, the player will need an average of 39.2 spins. And um, two player game is supposed to end in four, in four, about 48 moves with a 50.9% chance of winning for the first player. So the thing is, is that if you go first, you got a 1% chance more of winning. So um, that's crazy. You know, so if you ever play shoots and ladders with me, I'm going first. But it's interesting, it's, it's like saying that, okay, you've got a 1% chance better of winning if you do shoots and ladders. Here's the classic ad. Here's a game about climbing up and sliding down. It's called Shoots and Ladders. You can land on something good, like rescuing a kitten in a tree. Ah, you're going up, up, up the ladder. Or land on break for a cookie jar. First one to climb to 100 wins. Shoots and Ladders really has its ups and downs, but mostly it's lots of fun. Shoots and Ladders is a Milton Bradley game. Yeah. So, you know, it's just basically these kids and all that. And, um, yeah, so, you know, but the thing I think you can see is that the game mechanics are fairly, very simple. But the thing is, is that, you know, the, the game mechanics actually, even if, even if you have a simple set of, uh, if you even have a simple set of rules, so do any of you not know the, um, the game called Go? It's a, it's a Japanese game played on a grid uh, just, with black and, just with black and white uh, dots. And um, so the thing is, it's one of the most complex games there is. It's, you know, it's, 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 I think it's arguably more complex than chess. So, of course you'd know it, Nadia. Um, but, you know, that was one of the big, um, big tests for, uh, for machine learning, artificial intelligence. You know, if somebody could meet a, beat a grandmaster at Go, and, you know, it, it, it happened last year. That's crazy. Um, so board games are serious stuff. Candyland, our last um, case study. So designed 1948, Eleanor Abbott when she was recovering from polio. And so the thing is, is that she made it and tested it out on the uh, kids in her ward. And um, Milton Bradley, again, uh, bought it. And um, so the thing is, is that they put it out in there and put it in 
some of their, um, they filled it in, you know, for some of their primary product line. And so anyway, Candyland was really, um, really successful. And I, I actually used to play Uncle Wiggly. That's a weird one. I, man, that, that brings back some old brain cells. That's really crazy. And, um, you know, there's another game company called Parker Brothers. And so, I mean, it, it, got, them, it got them up to the size of Parker Brothers. So, um, they think that Eleanor Abbott did the, uh, did the game art, but who knows. But anyway... So just for reference, if some of you don't remember, polio, you know, it's, you know, it's almost taken care of because of a vaccine and um, it's really infectious and it's actually a virus that's kind of similar to uh, coronavirus actually. And this is the reason why I'm talking about it. And so the thing is, is that it would uh, about 1%, you know, half to 1%, it would, uh, paralyze you. And so what happens is like this girl here, she's in this thing called, a uh, an iron lung. And so there's this seal, you know, around her neck. And so what happens is, is it, it sucks upon it. it it's basically an artificial diaphragm. So what happens is, is that, um, you know, it sucks air into your lungs, and now we use ventilators, but um, the, the whole thing is, is that um, some of the victims of polio were in these things for 60 years until they died. 60 years. Crazy. Anyway. Um, but um, the, the, the president in the 1930s, um, in America, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he had, he had, he got it. And, uh, for his second term, he had to, you know, he wouldn't show it because he wouldn't, didn't want to show he was weak, but second part of his, uh, you know, second part of the, his service for the United States was done in a wheelchair. Pretty amazing. So here we go. Now that's, that's just my, it's not candy line. So anyway, okay, so that's the idea. So you kind of have some ideas as to how some games work, you know, how to analyze them. And I want you to start thinking about how to, you know, what, what your game's gonna look like, you know, and how it's gonna work. So that's the reason why I want you to look at a whole bunch of board games. That's. That's kind of it. In other words, I don't want you to basically be pulling a rabbit out of a hat. And that's fair enough, I think. So, and the other thing is that, oh, by the way, did any of you uh, get it? Did, uh, did, was anybody able to watch that uh, high score uh, documentary that I put out? Okay, please do. I think I'm going to do a short quiz on it. So um, go take a look at that because I think it gives some real important um, context to the entire semester. So and I really do want you to watch it. It's really important. So, okay. So anyway, this is always, this is always going to be the... Um, last screen of our um, PowerPoint. No, no, no. I mean, I have it, I have it up, I have it up in the Dropbox. Yes, OSHA. No, I have it in a Dropbox. I have it as an MP4. You can go watch it at home. Um, you know what? I don't have the group link. Uh, will the administrator please, um, send out the group, well, will somebody send out the group link to, um, to the WhatsApp chat and then I'll send it out as an email, okay? So let's get everybody involved. So fantastic.
Um, okay, anyway, are we on target? Everybody okay? You know, I just wanna make sure that you get through the material and then you get started on things. And I think that'll be, you know, this, uh, this is actually not a bad project, you know, because what happens is it, it really does teach a lot about game mechanics. So, okay. So is, um, is everybody good? So basically you've got your assignments, go out, do your case study, start working on your game and start working on your game idea. We'll talk about that. Um, I think Sunday is going to be pretty long. Um, we'll be, I'll share some, I'll share some of the documents and then, um, you know, we'll talk about game ideas and think about how to put together, how to put together a, uh, a game dynamic. And then there we go. So um, just a little work involved, but the work isn't that hard, you know? So anyway, all right. So if everybody's okay, I'm going to end up, um, and I'm going to put this up in the, I'm going to put today's talk as a recording up in the, uh, up in the teaching stuff, or if it doesn't fit up there, it'll be in, it'll be in the drop, it'll be in the drop box. And, um, so yeah, there we go. Um, easy peasy, as they say in, 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 in Britain, where I'm not from, but Anyway, that's okay. Oh, um, hey, by the way, just for reference, I am, um, as I said, I'm planning on having a week together on uh, September 22nd and uh, 27th. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's you know, either September 27th or October 1st, somewhere in there. Um, We'll, uh, we'll go for that. And then what happens is that you will get at least 10 days lead time so you can get your test. The other, the other reason why I'm not really kind of, um, uh, the school seems to be still kind of sorting things out a bit about, uh, about all this. So, um, let's see here. Hang on. Okay, and 